So last summer, I was facilitating a middle school Sacred Voices workshop. Walking into the room, I saw the potential and curiosity of the young faces of color in front of me, their energy unfiltered, searching for a suitable outlet. Almost immediately, I was called to hold space for their feelings, emotions, experiences, and lived truths. For weeks, we processed topics of gun violence and racism in schools, using poetry to breathe life into their words, some students proclaiming that they could never make a change, others protecting themselves by not being present in the space with us. In the middle of a lesson, a young black trans boy began to bind his chest with duct tape. I watched as they pulled the tape into their skin, potentially causing skin muscular and nerve damage, all in the name of presenting an outward image of their body that matched the image of their head. I watched and I remembered my experience with binding. In the beginning of my transition, I played with my gender expression. Do I want to be masculine? Do I want to be feminine? I'm not quite sure. For me, it was a pass in a play housing between the femme and the mass energy that I have, ultimately sitting in the comfortable, authentic space that I rest now. But this student was not in a place of play. They had an urgency in them that made me stop and change the direction of my lesson for the day. The experience of gender is not easily explained because it does not exist. I explained to my students it is a social construct, a meaningless thing in society that decided it had value. In my Exploring Gender workshop, the student told me that his gender expression was rooted in transphobia and homophobia. Like many black families, his did not support him, breaking that social norm. And this was a safer space to bind than home. He also expressed to me that I was the first black trans artist he knew. That was not an honor I wanted to take lightly, and I decided I would be for him what I needed when I began my journey of coming into myself. The first lesson I taught him was resourcefulness. My superpower is community. And through it, I found a trans organization providing free chest binders to trans youth. The second lesson I taught him was the proper way of binding and how dangerous things like duct tape and ace bandages were to his body. Before giving him the binder, we made an agreement of how, when, and how long he was to wear his binder and care for his body. I also let him know that I was in his corner to reach out to whenever and any time he needed. By the end of the program, my students had written and given me several poems, but I was not prepared for the one I received from my Quirby that day. The first time my black trans body was seen, this poem reminded me of the work that affirmed the work that affirmed the work that affirms the things that I do with Sacred Voices and the things that are so important to our young people here in Denver. I share this story because I know the power and the sacredness of my impact on those youth that day. I am passionate about the work we do at Sacred Voices because we are youth-driven and we are youth-led. I am living proof of that. I was once a performer, now co-executive director. We provide spaces where youth can come into their full selves unapologetically and unfiltered. We believe that art is an integral tool of resistance and wellness for our communities. And all of our services, our workshops, our open mics, events are all free to youth. This is why I need your support tonight. I envision a six-week Speak Your Truth program, which I made two days ago at 10 p.m. Don't ask me how it happened. My brain was like, what if you make a summer program? And I was like, hmm, let me see. Um, and I made it. It's six weeks. It's flushed out. It is ready. I just need the support, the locations, the funds, so that these young people in Denver, these young people that I work with every day, can have this opportunity to share their voices, be sacred, and be held. That is my story, and thank you all so much for listening.